you found a giant data set, you try to load it with Python, and your computer gets stuck. But it doesn't mean you need better hardware. It only means you need to improve your code. Here's how. So on the menu, we have a CSV file with almost 3 million rows that takes up 11 gigabytes of space. It's a very big file. And today, I will show you some clever techniques of how to reduce its processing time. Now, we will compare its performance across two different systems. The first one is my new gen super powerful PC, and the other one is my poor old laptop, which is barely even operational. So if my laptop can handle it, so does your computer. Now you can, of course, follow along using your own data set, regardless of the shape and size. But if you're curious to see how professional data platforms work, let me show you how to get a sample of the same data that I'll be using for free. Now I got my enormous data set from brightdata.com. And yes, it's the same data set that you guys have voted for in a recent community post. Now, Bright Data is a powerful web data platform that just happens to provide gigantic, ready-to-use datasets. And of course, all the means of controlling them as well. Now, to get our sample, we will log in and we will navigate to our user dashboard. Then, we will click on this Datasets and Web Scraper tab, followed by a click on the Dataset Marketplace, where we will search for Amazon. And boom! Here's our lovely Amazon bestseller products data set, and it currently contains 2.3 million records. But this keeps changing all the time. Those type of data sets are constantly updated. So if anything changes on Amazon, it changes here as well. Now, if you think that 2 million records is a lot, I wonder how you feel about 279 million of them. That's a bit more intense, okay? <laughs> Now let's quickly click on view dataset and we can of course download an arbitrary sample of data either in a JSON or in a CSV format. But why on earth would we do that if we can filter and customize our data first? For this we will click on this create a custom subset button and we will call this subset filtered. Now let's say that we're only interested in the products where the product category includes electronics, okay? And in addition, we would like those products to have a value inside their image URL field. So image URL exists true. Now you can of course keep customizing it further. I'm just gonna click on create subset. And beautiful, we are now dealing with a completely different set of values. And instead of 2.3 billion, we now have 65,000 of them. And that's exactly why we always filter our data before downloading it, especially if you're planning on purchasing it. There is a very big gap between 2 million and 65,000, okay? Now let's quickly click on download sample and we will get our sample in a CSV format. Our fine-tuned, beautiful sample. Let's click it and yay! Here's our lovely CSV file. Now, on my end, I'll be working with a complete and unfiltered version of this dataset just to showcase all the complexity around it. Now, let's quickly double check that this file is indeed 11 gigabytes in size. Wow! Now, let's see what we can do about it. Now, once we have a dataset, we will navigate to Anaconda where we will open Jupyter notebook in the exact same directory as our file. Now, if you're not sure how to do this, please check out my Anaconda guide for beginners. Now, once we are inside Jupyter, we will create a brand new Python 3 notebook. We will call it Amazon Data. And as usual, we will begin with the imports. Now, since data is what we seek, we will first import pandas spd which will help us with reading, organizing, and searching within our dataset. In addition, we will import the tie module, 
which will help us with measuring just how long each operation takes. Now, the first thing we'll do here is we will load our CSV file with pd.read underscore CSV, to which we will pass the name and the path to our file, in my case, data.csv. We will then assign this expression to data. And since we'd like to measure just how long this operation takes, right above it, we will create another variable called start. We will then assign it to time dot time in an empty set of round brackets, which represents the current time. Then at the very end of this cell, we will add a print statement that says file loaded this took or this operation took to which we will concatenate the current time dot time minus the start time. Ha! Huh. Now, in addition, we will also mention that what we really mean is seconds. Now, the last print statement here, we will verify that the size of our data matches our expectations. For this, we will type data shape and we will assign it to data dot shape. Okay, makes sense. Let's quickly give it a run with shift enter, by the way. And when I say quickly, what I actually mean, not so quickly. <laughs> you will see it shortly. And eventually, after 99 seconds, we are finally able to load our file despite this warning. And the reason why we know we loaded this file is because the shape of our data is 2.3 million rows by 39 columns, which is what we expect. Now, I wish I could say the same about my laptop. Because if I am running the exact same code, my notebook dies and I am unable to load this file at all. So what are we supposed to do now? Well, let's start with solution number one. Focus on relevant data. So my question to you is, do we really need all those 39 columns? Well, probably not, but it depends on the nature of your project. So let's say that in our case, we are making an app that simplifies shopping on Amazon. So when I imagine it, I imagine a product title, an image, a price, as well as a link to the original listing on Amazon. So let's try to implement it. In order to make it happen, we will need to take a look at the titles of our columns. For this, we will navigate to the next cell and we will type data.columns. Let's give it a quick run. Now let's quickly pick and choose what columns we need and what columns we don't need. So first things first, we will definitely need the final price. We will also need the image URL, the title, the URL. And actually, let's also include the product category because it might be important, especially if we'd like to expand on our app in the future. Now, in order to focus on those columns, we will go to the very first cell and we will add a use calls property to our read CSV method. Now we will assign this property to a list with all the column names we are interested in. So we will begin with final price. We will add image underscore URL, then the URL of our listing, as well as the title. And lastly, we will also include the category, which is written as categories. Okay, now to make everything a bit more readable, we will split this line of code into several lines. There you go. Ooh. And before we run this cell, let's make a quick memory note that it previously took us 99 seconds to run it. I wonder if we can improve it now. So let's quickly give it a run. And beautiful, we are now loading this file almost twice as fast. Now, please keep in mind that these results are approximate. If we'd like to get accurate results, we will need to warm up our CPU first. Now, when it comes to my laptop, it was finally able to load this file in a record time of five minutes, which is something, but it's still not good enough. There must be a better way, which leads me to solution number two, known as chunking. Now, with chunking, instead of loading our 11 gigabytes of data all at once, we first split it into small chunks and then we load them bit by bit. You may know this process as batching. For this, we will add a new property inside read CSV known as chunk size. Now, on your end, I recommend to set it to 10. You're dealing with a smaller subset. But on my end, I'm going to set it to 50,000. 
Now, since we are splitting the original data frame, we are no longer dealing with a data frame object, but with something called a text file reader. That's why all the attributes and all the methods associated with data frames are no longer relevant to our data variable. So let's go ahead and comment out our shape print statement, and let's give this cell another run. And wow, this operation took less than one second. Holy smokes. And it's the first time I can say the same about my laptop, which also shows very similar results. Yay. Now, in order to access each of our chunks, we will need a for loop. So for index chunk in enumerate data, where enumerate allows us to iterate both over the chunk as well as its order in the sequence represented by index. Now, if the index of our chunk is equal equal to zero, then we will go ahead and print this chunk. Otherwise, we will need an else clause where we will break from this loop. And we don't really want to iterate over all our chunks. We just want to have a nice peek inside. So let's quickly run this cell. Awesome. This is how each of our chunks looks like. We can see all our fields, final price, image URL, so on and so on. Now, the only problem with a text file reader object is that we cannot modify it at all. And if we want to access one of the records or one of the fields, we can't because the chunk comes as is. It is read only. Now, the way to bypass it, if you do need to modify something within your chunks, is to convert it back into a data frame. We will do this with pd.dataframe, to which we will pass our chunk. Okay, we can then assign it to df, and then we can try to print df in the field of final price in the index of zero. Okay, let's give it a run. And beautiful, we are now accessing one of our fields. And if we want to reassign it, let's go ahead and copy the contents of our print statement, and let's assign it to 8.88. For example, let's give it a quick run. And perfect! We are now modifying the values of our chunks. Excellent! Now, the last solution we will explore is saving our modified data into a new CSV file. For this, we will retract from our chunk size property and also from our for loop. In addition, we will uncomment our print statement and we are ready to convert our data frame into a CSV file. For this, we will type data.2 underscore CSV, to which we will pass the name of our not yet existing file. On my end, I will call it modified underscore data dot CSV. And then I will set its encoding to UTF-8, which means that the format of our characters will be consistent. Now, let's go ahead and set the index to false. Otherwise, everything will look extra messy. Cool, let's run this cell. And after 60 seconds of wait, we now have a brand new CSV file inside our project folder. And this time, we are dealing with 600 megabytes of size. Wow! And if it sounds too good to be true, I agree. Let's double check that we didn't mess anything up. So back in our notebook, let's copy our read CSV command. We will then apply it on our modified data and we will assign it to new data. Okay, now also let's copy our timing command. We might as well, as well as our print statements. Cool, now in the last print statement, we will modify data to new data. Okay, let's test if it worked. Shift enter and boom! After seven seconds, we are loading the same shape of a file. What sorcery is this? I still can't believe it. Let's print, <laughs> let's print the content of new data. Okay, let's do new data.head, which will print the five topmost values. Wow, the data exists. Congratulations, now we know exactly how to handle enormous data sets and how to reduce them if necessary. Now, in addition, we found that the key to a successful data project is surprise, surprise within the data itself. 
It has nothing to do with the hardware, and it's not necessarily has to do with the quantity of data. It has much more to do with the quality. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a huge thumbs up and share it with the world. If you'd like to see more videos of this kind, you can always subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. Now, if you have any questions or anything to say, please leave me a comment below. I read your comments all the time. And yeah, I'll see you soon in another awesome tutorial. In the meanwhile, bye-bye.